Welcome back to day eight here in Budapest, the 2021 World Judo Championships. And it's been amazing. Uh, seven magnificent days of incredible judo in the 14 individual categories that we've had. And they've just uh, shown us Ippon's galore. And uh, today is the last day of the World Championships. It's the eighth day. And we've got the team competition. Now, if you've never seen a team competition before, then you're in for a real treat, I can tell you. The mixed teams, and there's three men uh, categories and three ladies categories, uh, is what it's all about. So uh, six man teams, and uh, it's so exciting. And you're gonna be on the end of your seat. Uh, joining me in the commentary position is Loretta Cusack Doyle, Loretta. Welcome. You're going to. This is amazing, isn't it? Oh, it's been really exciting all day. I just love a team event, and it's so it's so nice to see united the men and women together, and it just makes it it brings it together, making it very very special. Yeah, and well, well we, first hand look here. Everybody warming up here. These are the finalists, actually. Uh, so Japan and France in here, uh, warming up getting ready and uh, they've got their reserves in there. So when they say it's a team, it really is a team. It's not just about the six people out there, but it, it is a real team. Yeah, you're, you're so right. It's about um, 
uniting everyone together and supporting each other. And that was what was really, really nice uh, about the whole day is watching not only what was going on the mat, but what was going off the mat. Well, uh, we're going to go first of all to the bronze medal match. The first one, we've got two, uh, Korea versus Uzbekistan. And uh, as you can see here, uh, we've got uh, Anne Junsing, uh, Han Hiju, Han Jiyop, Kim Hae-yun, Won Jong-yun and Kim Yandy. And uh, that is the team that is lined up for Korea. Let's have a little look and uh, see the highlights of uh, how they got there. So that's how Korea got there. And uh, now let's have a look at the um, Uzbek team and uh, lightest weight category. And it's going to start at 73 kilograms. Uh, Nomanov, uh, we've got uh, Matnyazova, Zandriev at uh, under 90s, uh, sorry, plus 90s, uh, plus 70s, uh, Kurembeyeva. And uh, then we've got plus 90 kilograms Turbeyev and under 57 kilograms Amanova. And uh, I'll explain a little bit more why it starts with that weight category a little bit longer. But let's have a look, see how these made it to the bronze medal position. Well, all systems go, and it's all ready to go, isn't it? And it's just, just a, a great atmosphere. Um, at the beginning of the day, they pull out uh, of a hat the uh, beginning weight category, and then it goes uh, in sequence then as um, uh, for the, each round, um, they start with a different weight category. And uh, so for this final, starts with under 73 kilograms. Uh, Roberta Shirley is going to be officiating. She keeps them under control, I promise you that. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a great match. They're gonna come out from different sides of the stadium. Like I say, we've got two uh, bronze medal matches, Brazil and RJF, which is Russian Judo Federation, is the next one. Let's concentrate on this one first. There's the Uzbekistan coming in, and don't they look serious indeed. <laughs> Up for this. Yeah. Well, it, it is, isn't it? I mean, we, we watched them warming up out, out in the warm-up area, and you can see the nerves and uh, of course then as soon as you walk into the stadium it's game on i mean we haven't got uh, a full capacity crowd because we're not allowed to have for obvious reasons uh, but i tell you the crowd that's in here will be making enough noise for everybody there's no doubt about it and the thing is what i love about this as much action is on the mat there is more action off the mat and that's what's really interesting well is seeing the reaction of their teammates yeah i, I just explain about the dugout there because uh, the rest of the team go into the dugouts uh, at the side of the mat and you'll see them they need to come out of the dugout so i mean everybody's involved absolutely everybody have a little look at how the team rev themselves up before they start this is about depending on your teammate. And it gets very interesting if it goes 3-3. I'll explain that to you as we go on through. Uh, under 73 kilograms is the first category out. And Jun Sung uh, of Korea is coming out here and uh, he is fighting Nomanov of Uzbekistan. Well, it's, Nomanov well, for me has been outstanding, oh, outstanding. today. Yeah, I thought it was a fantastic performance today. How important is this first contest as well? Oh, this, this can change the whole dynamics of the way the athletes prepare. Well, also it can start a run as well. I've seen it go bang, bang, bang with team matches. And I was explaining earlier, uh, I've been on the end of uh, you know, team competition where, oh, look at that Uchimata there. That's close. Oh my goodness, nearly a counter. 
Well, definitely a great start, isn't it? Wow. And it's um, a nervous start for the teammates and the opposition. Well, she wants to go to video referee here to have a look. And uh, it was a really, uh, yeah, it was a great counter. And if you counter, you're not allowed to go onto your own back, but that had full twist in it. But it's the landing you have to look for and it didn't have the landing, so no score. So uh, the four ways you can score is by throwing your opponent on the side or on the back. On the back is an ip on. Uh, hold down for 20 seconds, arm lock or strangle for a submission. And that's for the people that have never done judo before. I know we've got some watching. And a team match, it's all about wins. So three men's weight categories, three ladies categories, all about wins. Not about whether you win by ip on or wazari, it's about the win. And the interesting thing is, if it goes 3-3, then you have a, a golden score match that is drawn out of a hat and you could fight again. Well, Nomanov here, I think, is really can take in full control of this match, hasn't he? Nice score there, puts his team in the lead as we stand, but this could all go horribly wrong. Well, it, well, <laughs> and it often does, doesn't it? It was a really good take uh, uh, turnover, wasn't it, uh, Komanov? Uchimata there, and then he just drives through, doesn't he? And it's all about the hands and finish with the hands. Nicely controlled when he went down there, wasn't he? Well, I was saying that the Koreans haven't had a good individual world championship. It's been the worst one they've ever had, actually. And uh, it could be that they're keeping their number ones uh, for the Olympic Games and they put their number twos in, but uh, Japan have done the same. And uh, used some of their threes and fours for this team match as well. Now, he's looking up for the score there, but I don't think it was. It was more the movement there from the Korean. That's the score, the actual score. Yeah, he definitely tried to take onus of that last one, wasn't he? Referee weren't having none of it. No, well, they look up, don't they? And they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they don't control it with the hands. They've got to direct it with the hands if they're changing direction. Big arm over now from uh, Nomanov. I think he's going for the Ippon, but uh, he doesn't need to take chances. And that's the thing about a team competition is that you don't need to take chances. You can close it down and just aim for the win. Not that they do. They've been going for the Ippons all day. There has been some big scores, but there's been some really close matches, hasn't there? And, there, and there's been some surprises uh, along the way, especially when it came to Uzbekistan and France. That was down to the, the last extra man, and, yeah. um, and it was a real turnaround. So for me, you can never underestimate a team collectively. And the best people are not, it's like um, any team match, it's not always the best people in the team that win. Yeah, good forward roll that, wasn't it? To come back between yes. the legs there and uh, be in an attacking position. That's a, a BJJ situation, that one. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, uh, brilliant on the ground, of course. Well, and for Korea now is a little bit of trouble here. He's got two Shidos as well as a Wazari against him. Um, but he's working his way into the Niwaz. He's got that Juju Katami there. Well, that was a good turnover, wasn't it? And hopefully he's tight onto the arm and uh, he can put, apply pressure onto the arm here. Or oh, he manages to pull it in, Nomanov. That was timing, wasn't it? He just had to time that right. Well, the man yourself is the expert on that. And um, yeah, it, he just timed it as he was just about to pull it out. He was able to escape. Well, all the Uzbek team there, from the individuals as well, all up in the stands, uh, shouting their teammates along. And uh, those two Shidos there, those two little yellow dots there are Shido penalties. And you can get those for stepping outside of the area, not attacking uh, every 20, 30 seconds or being too passive, too defensive. And uh, yeah, there's small 
but they add up very, very quickly. Three of those and it's all over. So Anne will lose it anyway if he gets another. 28 seconds left. In for the Juji again. Does he have enough time? And this is the thing, he's, he's got this one in control. He's looking for that back leg to get the spin over the top. Well, he wants to, to do that, but he's wasting valuable seconds there. T uh, 10, 11 seconds on the clock here. And if I, well, obviously Nomanov needs to just block out. Uh, he's got two Shidos to play with and uh, not take any chances. This is where team tactics come into it. He wins anyway. Nomanov take, uh, takes Uzbekistan 1-0 up. Well, Uzbekistan, they did dominate in that first round. So for me, it's a good start, isn't it? It's a positive injection of confidence for his team. So let's see what the next one does. I think always the first one, Loretta, always kind of kicks it off. It and does, like yeah. I say, I, I, I was trying to say earlier that I've been on the end of a team skittle, you know, where we got skittled out. You know, it just it goes on a run. So uh, the first contest really important. That was a nice little change, wasn't it? Uchimata, Kouchi, and then he just directs him over with the hands. Look at him catch the foot there. And the Korean couldn't stop it. A can real continuous drive of that back leg wasn't there to the side. So it goes men, ladies, men, ladies, men, ladies. And so it's a ladies category up next, minus 70 kilograms. And Han Hiju is coming out for Korea. And uh, she'll be fighting Matnyazova of Uzbekistan. She looks quite confident there, doesn't she? She is very confident. And, uh, as, you know, I've watched her all the way through, actually, in this competition. And uh, she's uh, really cool, calm and collected. But uh, we'll see, because it's really opposing styles here, isn't it? I mean, you've got the wrestling styles of the Uzbek team who sometimes take these different grips and these different strategies of how to throw and of course very upright and strong from the Koreans so we should see two different styles here. Martinia Zova for me has been a great asset to this team throughout the day. Very very strong, compact, very powerful in, in injecting her, her attacks every time. Yeah, she's getting stronger and stronger, isn't she, as she goes through. And uh, it's, it's great watching some of the um, ladies, especially when they're in uh, countries that um, haven't had good development. And uh, so now it is developing quick. Well, that was a nice entry there for the Uchimata. So that's got her going, really. So one up to uh, Manitzova and Han still to get going. I think that was a little clash, wasn't it? But um, it's never intentional. They're no. fighting hard for grips. They're trying to grip the jacket. The one that uh, grips up is normally the one that initiates. As they say, it's never personal. It's only business. <laughs> I like that. Uh, <laughs> is that how you used to do it, was it? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and that is from a lady's perspective. No, no. It, no, it was no. safe for us. It, exactly. Now then, what's going to happen? <laughs> Oh, well, that wasn't far off, but I think that went off the ground, actually. And, yes, uh, yeah, I think yeah, you're right there. Definitely went off the ground. So just have a look where Han is when she's down there. Two elbows grounded, and then she gets taken over. If there's only one elbow down, then it's still in uh, uh, standing work in Tachiwaza. So then they can score by tipping the balance. Remember, they've got to get each other on the side or on the back. Throw on the back with impetus, like oh, that! Oh, wow! What a throw! <laughs> well, that was a great example, wasn't it? Right on the button there. So powerful. <laughs> a great example there of how to score Ippon. Mani over, scores Ippon and takes Uzbekistan 2-0 up. 
four nil finishes it. The other two don't have to fight. So they used to. They used to uh, fight the last two, but uh, they well didn't bother. No need. <laughs> didn't want to get injured. But that's it. You know. But uh, so they said no. That we won't do it anymore. Iliadis there. The great man himself making a massive difference to this team. What Beautiful a... Surrey gosh, she wasn't it? What a hit movement that was. So powerful, wasn't she? Look at the hips in so deep. Came from around the waist, just barely coming around the waist. Wasn't in too deep, but um, the, it was that sleeve grip she's got, the pulling action there. Yeah, she had two stabs at it. The first one got uh, the Korean to stiffen up. And as she stiffened up, over she went like a board. And just as I was explaining, well, ways of scoring from a throw, that's how you score a Nippon. Flat on the back with force. <laughs> and, <laughs> this is what I just love. You see the emotions <laughs> off the side, the energy that's been built up just at the side of the mat area. Wow, what a start. Now you can see it's under 90 kilograms for men next. And it's another Han, Han Yu Up, who's just about to step out to uh, Sandreev of Uzbekistan. But I mean, Natsubitsi takes over. I think they, uh, they referee two matches while they're out there. And uh, then they have a swap over. Do you know, that was something I didn't notice was the changeover of referees. Yes. I was so engrossed in the actual <laughs> athletes themselves. I didn't really take notice on who was refereeing. No. Which is, a, it's good, isn't it? If you don't notice the referee, they're doing a good job. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Han Ju Yup, under 90 kilograms. And up against his Uzbek opponent here, Jandriev. Jandriev is in blue. This to take them 3 0 up. Well, this would really pile the pressure on the, the Koreans, wouldn't it, if they get this win? Too long on one side there, Han. So it's uh, got to be sleeve lapel for a traditional grip and then you can uh, a bit more time to set up. If it's one side you're holding, then you've got to attack immediately. So look at the different uh, gripping strategies oh. there. Lovely sassi, wasn't it? That, that was absolutely a sassi oh, there, yeah, wasn't it? That was, that was perfect. And there Just, was a nice transition into the Niwaza. It was beautiful, yeah. Straight in for the uh, strangle there. Sasai, block and lift. It's got a lift. That's the difference between that and here's a Garuma, which is a knee wheel. Oh! That's going to be it. That's it. It was Ari. Beautiful there. Jandriev there came in for drop C and Aggie and over he went. He came off the other shoulder, actually, didn't he? Yeah, he felt, yeah, definitely fell over the other side. It was so fast. He'd, I think he didn't know which way he was going to fall or how to react to that one. It was in so deep. It is all about the preparation, the setup, the the strong Kimikata. But yeah, again, he was holding on the same side, uh, the Korean there, but. Uh, he was first in, wasn't he, Jandriev? Yes, definitely. Now he's holding the same side, Jandriev. Just halfway through this uh, first four minutes. If it goes four minutes and no score on the board, then it goes into golden score. No chance of that at the moment. It's a really intense match, this, between them. 
and it's something you just can't you can't write this one off yet although there is a wazari on the board for the uzbekistan there is so much action coming from han right now he's really changed the dynamics being he's backed up and seeing aggie from han he's under pressure one minute 30 left Every match is exactly the same as an individual match. The only difference is you're playing for your team. And you're playing for a win as well. Well, this will put them into a 3-0 lead. And I have seen a 3-0 lead pulled back. So they win the next three. Then it's pulled out the hat for the fourth contest. Well, to be honest, it was a 3-0. This happened to Uzbekistan in the earlier stages. They were 3-0 down and came back to win. It's incredible, isn't it? You've got to win four on the knock then. <laughs> yeah. Four on the trot. Oh, nice that, Ochi Gary. So now into the last minute. This is crucial now to close this one down, I would say, for Jandriev. He'll have to be careful of those. Just about gets away with it because he broke his balance. Yeah. Needs more rotation. It's amazing how in the last minute, uh, that's going to be a Shido there for sure for Jandriev. Is it? Oh, he oh. gets away with it. <laughs> Giving him the benefit of the doubt on that one. Oh, I think so. Yandriev is under a bit of pressure here. His timing is slightly out, but Han comes in, obviously, with the Sienaghi. But is that belt grip from Well, Jean I mean, Vier. he just had to go in there. He really did. And uh, 15 seconds here away from being 3-0 up. And look at the faces there <laughs> of his teammates. Good attacks here from the Korean. Eight seconds and counting down. Well, it's a penalty on the last second there. Two penalties go up to Jandriev. Is he bothered? No, <laughs> it doesn't make any difference so. here because uh, <laughs> the bell's going to go. 3 0 up then. I think part of a team event is seeing what's happening externally because there's more energy being burnt up at the side of the mat. As you can watch the team, part of me is thinking, they've got to fight soon, so why are they not calming down? They must be spent by the time they come on to fight themselves. Well, it's nervous energy, isn't it? You know, I mean, when we go into the training hall, we make sure that we're calm and we do our uchikomi, we do our repetition work and, they, and then work up a, a sweat, but uh, I mean, they're already in a lather. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he looks like he's glad that one's over and done with. That's his uh, world championships finished. He's done his job. What a good fight. That really was. The Korean as well, putting some good attacks in. That's seeing Aggie there coming off the other shoulder. So deep there. And fast, yeah. There's a noticeable difference between the Uzbekistan team now. They're so sharp, but they're so fit, aren't they? Well, a lot fitter. I mean, I, I spoke to uh, Iliadis and asked him, I said, what's the difference? He said, they didn't train. And well, he trains, and, believe well, me. Yeah, yeah, he trains. <laughs> he does. He's an absolute beast in that gym, isn't he? But Absolutely. They, they do. They look comfortable out there. They can go to time but they really are digging in deep all the way. So it comes back then to uh, ladies division here. Now it's the heavyweight uh, ladies division next, which is the plus 70 kilos category. Kim Hae-yun is uh, out here against uh, Cubben Bieva. So this could uh, just wrap it all up. Not one of the biggest heavyweights we've seen throughout this um, tournament. But she's able to move, she's strong. She moves well on the mat and she's got the power enough to move the heavier weight divisions.
Although, because what we're looking at is the plus 70s, and obviously we have plus 78s. Yeah, well, we some of the uh, uh, weight categories are, are amalgamated, and, and when it comes to the heavier divisions, the uh, plus 70 kilograms can uh, fight somebody uh, 130 kilograms, and so you can really see the difference uh, sometimes, especially with the heavyweights. So we'll see what happens here. Well, this is what I was saying about the Uzbek. Straight away, that grip over the top draws her opponent in and straight in for the attack. No messing around here against Kim. No, she's not scared, is she? Because uh, Kim's a little bit bigger, but giving a bit of weight away, but she'll make up for it in speed. Although there's a lot of weight uh, difference here between them, there isn't that much of a height difference. So I think this would be an advantage for... Um, Uzbek. Well, she needs to just keep out off the ground, doesn't uh, it? looks like Kim doesn't want to go down there anyway, so I think it will be uh, decided from a standing perspective. And better with the heavyweights to hit with the throws to the back. Saying that, and she just sticks a Sodi in there right the way underneath. Sodi Surakumigoshi off the sleeves. Big hit movement. Well, it has been Kubabaeva's match all the way, right from the beginning. She has meant business out there. Whole team supporting her all the way there, building her confidence up. Yeah, well, they know one more contest now, so That's they've got uh, the next three contests. And uh, they just need one win from any of the contests. That's where she doesn't want to be, I think, anyway. I mean, uh, I, it looks dangerous to me. I think that uh, Kim could probably rotate through for an Uchi Mata. Or probably even the, Mac she, the Makakomi yeah, as well. Yeah, it's what she wants, it's isn't it? She wants, uh, I think, uh, Kerbin Beaver needs to be in and out. Totally agree with you that. Just stay busy, keep upright, don't engage too deep, especially don't allow our opponent over the top and get on that belt. Well, she was gripping the legs there, Cub and Beaver. You know, can't grip the legs when it's still in standing. Possibility of a penalty, she doesn't get it, so she gets away with that. Well, I love the fact that she's just mixing it here with Kim. She's just in there saying, all right, let's get it on. Kubabayev is just that little bit sharper, isn't she? Much faster in the uptake. Oh, that's it. That's where I would go as well. Kerbin Beaver trying the small Ochi Gary there to the back. Constantly play at the feet, just knocking the balance, knocking the confidence. Yeah, but she doesn't know what to do, does she, Kim? She's uh, got to move at the same pace. She just can't keep up with her right now. But this is the danger. She comes round that back. That's dangerous. Well, no decisions given in any judo contest. It has to go either three penalties up or it has to be a score that finishes it. We've been nowhere near a golden score so far. Hips across again. Just waiting for the counter there, Kim. Is she going to turn it into the hold down? Does well there, Kerbin Beaver. She, she does very well. And this is now the dangerous point, I feel, that she's got... We've, we've really we've gone past two and a half minutes now she's gonna and she's worked hard and she's gonna have to start staying away from her and working just with picking her off with the feet she starts standing still that's too much power she turns around that kim comes through with the hips she'll be over It's, been try it's trying to keep up with the work rate that we've seen with Uzbek at the beginning. This will start to slow down now. Yeah, well, it's tiring, you know, when you've got that uh, extra form, you know, that's yes. uh, just there and uh, you've got to try and move it all the time. 
fighting out of her skin here, Kerbin Bieva. Doing good job, tactically very astute. We're into the last minute. There's been a lot of work there, Kumbayeva, but this now is... Now then, is Kerbin Bieva in... Oh, I thought she would uh, into the hole down there. <laughs> it looked a bit 50-50, Yeah, it did. It, really? it looked 50-50, but uh, definitely Kim was the one doing the turnover and uh, ended up in trouble. She don't penalty up to uh, Kerbin Beaver. Oh. oh no, she's going to turn it and hold up. This is going to be one contest to the uh, Koreans. They're going to pull one back here. Needs to hold it down for 20 seconds. No score on the board, so it's 20 seconds. A score on the board, it would be just 10. Wore her down, didn't she? I was just saying, I was just thinking that. That was just, because there was no score, it allowed Kim to just continue doing what she was doing. She wasn't really under too much pressure, and it was just a matter of time wearing her down until eventually she capitalised on a half-hearted attack, a very soft attack that she could spin her over. It, there was a lot of work there for Kubabieva and sadly just run out of steam. Uzbekistan then, 3-1 now is the score. Uzbekistan still in the lead. Korea have pulled one back. Now, this is crucial. No pressure on the next one out. <laughs> Not much. Not much at all. So it's the heavyweight men next. But uh, let's just have a little look, see how she got into it there. She just kind of pushes her over, doesn't she? She has the inside grip on the lapel there and just rotates her onto her back. Uses her, her weight and uses the uh, support legs there to, to push her over. Once she secures it, no getting up. This is where the weight is an advantage, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it wore her down and uh, she felt it. So 3-1, still two chances here for Uzbekistan to capture the winning match. Plus 90 kilograms. It's normally plus uh, 100 kilograms, but uh, plus 90s means that the uh, minus 100 kilos is all in as part of the package and uh, they can fight the big heavyweights. So uh, Wan Zhongjun uh, is up against... Turabayev. Uh, Turabayev, that's it. I'm just uh, having a look there. It's in blue, I, can, I can't see the blue. But yeah, Turabayev. Well, they've uh, changed their heavyweight, the Koreans, from Kim. Kim just not performing and uh, lost by two Ippons, and uh, so they've gone for the minus 100 kilos fighter. So let's see how he does against the very ranges to Rebeyev. Look at the difference. On that belt, very dangerous, isn't he? <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> he's, he's not only dangerous, he's really rangy, he really is. Just going through some uh, gripping strategies here. If you do this and do that, and you might get yep, in. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Big arm coming over from Tudembeyev, and uh, almost, does he get taken back? Is it a score? He was all arms and legs there, wasn't he? Got himself knotted up. Yeah, Tanio Toshi almost scored that, wasn't far off. Everybody going through the motions there in the dugout. 
So both now cross gripped. Oh. oh. Well, it, it didn't start with uh, one, so he won't get the score. Uh, Turambeyev uh, was the one that started it. If you do change it, you've got to really direct it with the hands and uh, put some emphasis into the movement. Something's going to happen here. Oh, now then, that's definitely that's Turambeyev. Definitely. He gets the hip on and they've won the bronze. That's it. That was a really good change of direction and he had control all the way with that. Yeah, well, something was going to happen and uh, he had the leg entangled and this young man here now, look at that. <laughs> He's just won the bronze for Uzbekistan. We'll have a look how he changes the direction because like Loretta said, it was a, a really great change of direction. <laughs> well, there's the celebrations already started. A very happy bunch there. They can't believe it because uh, first medal for Uzbekistan and uh, and look at that, everybody <laughs> celebrates. <laughs> this, one, this is what the team is all about. It, this is what makes it so special. Uzbekistan celebrate and uh, everybody absolutely delighted and I'm just, uh, well, so delighted for my dear mate there who's uh, taken over the team, made such a difference, hasn't he? Oh, definitely. You can see a massive difference in the, the preparation, the power of these athletes. They've performed so well, not only in the individual, but here in this team. He's brought a bunch of individuals from all over to come together and be united. Great aerial view there. Now you can see what it's like to win a world bronze medal. Mixed teams, Uzbekistan. What a performance. Fantastic result. Ilyas Iliadis, the uh, team coach. And what a difference he's made to the team. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Three-time world champion, Olympic champion, superstar. And not only that, one of the nicest people I know. I was just thinking that myself. I just thought one of the nicest people I've ever met. So humble. He definitely leads by example, doesn't he? Well, he does lead by example. We see pictures of him all the time, you know, in his training. Here's the um, score. Let's just have a look at the score. Ha, ah, look how he changes the direction. And that's what I was talking about, about you've got to be physically changing of direction. Of course, hand goes for the uh, pickup, but he traps the leg, his head changes direction, and he has control. He has control right the way down to the floor. It's having that real true feel of what's going on, isn't it? To be able to be adaptable. Yeah, he just uh, hooks it round. <laughs> when he landed, he wasn't actually sure what he'd done, really. When you no, look well, at him. I mean, you've got to be uh, very careful with the Kawasagaki, uh, of course. The, if the foot entangles round too tightly, uh, and then you put a, a leg lock on as they're going over. But uh, I think it, it, the, the foot was turning, his body was turning, and uh, he gets the ip on for it. <laughs> they don't look that happy about it, do they, really? No, just wow. taking it as like an everyday occurrence, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You just love the celebrations. It just keeps a smile on your face. Wow. Now we've got to come down after that. We've got to oh, have a look at the uh, other bronze medal match in a minute. But uh, I get a, a funny feeling that, first of all, we're going to have a look at the, um, the final teams or the finalists 
and uh, all of their regulation uh, judogi controls. Oh, oh, tears in their eyes. You know, th this is uh, what teams are all about. And of course, uh, family there as well. So we are going to go then uh, to uh, directly through to the uh, South Korea versus Uzbekistan. So you can just have one last look at it there, see what happened. They were the weight categories. In the end, it was 4-1 to Uzbekistan. The one thing you can say here, what a fantastic arena, what a place to host a world championship. Oh, absolutely, it's, uh, it's amazing. So we haven't seen Kagura, he hasn't been out yet. So they've been putting the reserves out and you can do that in teams as well, put your reserves in. And so uh, they're all having their judogis uh, checked to make sure they're the right sizes all the way up the sleeves. It has to uh, go the same uh, width all the way up. Can't have it too tight. This is the next matchup then, Brazil versus RJF. And we've got uh, a few new ones in there for uh, RJF. So we'll have a look at the team first and uh, well, Barboza, well, we're going up here, I think, in weight categories here. Bar uh, Barboza at uh, under 73 kilograms. Uh, we've got Portela under uh, 70s. Uh, under 90s, Machado. Souza plus 70s. Mura plus 90s. And Nascimento is under 57 kilos. Let's just have a little look, see how they got to the uh, bronze medal match. Our JF team then, Ayatsev, Liliasvili, Kalamazayev, Vladimirova, Siki Overov, and uh, we've got Konkina as well. And uh, we're going to have a, a little look to see how they got to the bronze medal match in just a second. Brand new heavyweight up, Sovrabov. There he is. So uh, they put new ones out all the time, don't they, the RGF? They've got some depth, haven't they? Oh, absolutely, athletes. absolutely. This is how they got there. Lots of action in the earlier rounds. Definitely a pick of a good bunch there, wasn't there? <laughs> it was. Also a two-time world bronze medalist, Mathieu Bataille. For great France. Ref great referee. Yeah, no, great. Absolutely, really good all referee. great. Yeah. Uh, so we start with the under 73 kilograms, remember. They're leading out with their lightest uh, weight category and uh, it's going to go uh, first of all we start actually with the men's and then it will go ladies men's ladies men's ladies uh, but uh, we're seeing these leading out now with the lightest weight categories under 57 kilograms under 57s for ladies the lightest weight category for men is under 73 kilograms. So it uh, puts the under 60s and 66s underneath there. So uh, possible, mostly possible for under 66s to fight. Sometimes, don't very often see under 60s in there. So 
Same with the under 57s. You uh, have uh, 48s and uh, 52s possible that they could fight, but not very often they put a 48 in in a team match. That was a great aerial awareness, wasn't it? The good bird's eye view that we saw there. I just love that bird's eye view camera. It is absolutely amazing. It is truly amazing. 73 kilos, Barboza against Ayachev. And Ayachev uh, in blue there. Watch out for his uh, foot sweeps. And he's got some brilliant ones. But Barboza is a big thrower as well. Well, Barboza has that lovely Cianaghi that we have seen earlier rounds, but um, Arcio, for me, he's got great footwork, hasn't he? Good as he was. As. Yeah, he is truly amazing. I mean, he comes from different angles. You were saying earlier, I mean, they had, uh, well, another Russian in, took them through to the finals, then Ayachev just steps into the final. Nice technique there from Barboza, full of commitment. The first minute is always very intense, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're coming to grips with each other, literally, aren't they? And they can feel the power. Look at the grip there from uh, Archev. Oh, and there's the foot movement there. Goes to the outside of the leg to sweep it. Barboza was in a bit of trouble there. He was totally dominated in that last exchange. Yeah, he hasn't. Uh, yeah, well, he gets a Shido penalty up there on the board. Can't afford any more of those. Boboza there just looking to try and control the sleeves. Well, they control the sleeves and often we see them pushing them down, don't we? But if they push them down and then attack, it's what we, you know, action reaction, which is the name of the game, isn't it? But that's not always the case, is it? Sometimes it's to defend and uh, not attack or not to let your opponent attack. Ayachev is such an open uh, fighter, he'll give it his all, but sometimes he goes over himself because he's so open. And that's the danger, he can't afford to be too open with Barboza because he is a big throw when it comes to the Cienaghis. Allow him that space and it could be quite dangerous. Draws on that head, he's looking for reaction, like you say, action, reaction, to try and get Ossiev's head up. Then he'll come through for the Cienaghi. Yeah, this is a, a really strong physical match, isn't it? Oh, nice. Nice. Beautiful nice. feet there from Barboza. Nice little Kouchi there. Has Ayachev going over. Lands on his front, no score. Big Ashi Garuma there, this time from Barboza. Looking at the lineup, I would have thought that um, the RGF would be looking for this as a win for them on paper. Yeah, I mean, you know, they say that every contest is just so important in team competition. And like uh, you said earlier, I mean, you've seen teams fight it back from 3-0 down to 3-all, and then it goes on the last match. And uh, you can really put them in a good position. If you uh, secure 1-0, it's a, it's a good feeling. Well, did that go against the arm? Then I think it did, didn't it? That yep. uh, kind of trapped his arm. Well, this is a cagey match, isn't it? They're both uh, looking for the attacks. They're both attacking, but both afraid of being thrown. 
There's a lot of there's a lot of action, but there's there's a limited of engagement. There's a well, that was uh, Yoko Gaki, wasn't it? Yes. It's uh, kind of almost his Garuma, but uh, when they fall on their back with it, it's Yoko Gaki. Now, can he get the leg out here, Bar Barboza? He's tying up the top half here. If he can tie up the top half, get that leg out, there might be trouble. Well, I think trouble will be luring around there if Barboza takes this win. They've, they've got, Brazil have got some real strength in their women. When you look at Sozo, who got um, a bronze medal yesterday, and you've also got, um, like, Portela as well. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, some, some of the teams are loaded towards their men, some towards the women. So that's what makes it so interesting. I love it that uh, we've got this mixed team matches. I just uh, love the uh, format. I think it works. It's, it, there's a lot of cases that there is a nice balance, isn't there? Yeah. With men and women. So, into golden score. This is the first golden score we've seen today. So, golden score, any score now goes and it will finish the contest. Or two more penalties up for Barboza. That was a poor judgment there. They're giving him the benefit of the doubt on that one. Oh, Barboza straight in on the attack. A little bit loose on that arm. Needed to get more connection. But yeah, it's done the, it's done the job, hasn't it? Uh, Barboza putting the work in. Archev now gets a penalty himself. Can't just defend, and uh, the, uh, well, so Barboza just mm. dropped there. That was a waste, wasn't it? It, wow. it was a waste. I think it was just poor timing. I think he was, ho the leg got in his way, so when he dropped, he dropped behind him rather than in front of him. It's just poor timing. And this is what you're going to get in Golden Score because these guys are going to become very tired. It's been a long week for them, really, when you think about it. Well, some of the, yeah, these two have been fighting in the individual event as well. Um, sometimes they'll bring other people to fight in the teams, but uh, these oh. haven't. Oh, now then, he's straight onto the arm here. Yeah. Now, he was so quick onto that arm there. Has he got it out straight? It looks like oh. it. Oh, yes! yes! Gets the submission. That was brilliant, wasn't it? What a brilliant bit of Newaza that was. I actually thought Utsi have got the score as well before that Niwaza. It did look like a throw there, but it, it happened so quick. But it'll be interesting to see what happened as they went down into the Niwaza. Yeah, it depends whether he turns it, whether he controls it. And, and uh, uh, that, that is the important thing. Do you know what happens, uh, Loretta, so quickly that often it's difficult, isn't it? I mean, you think the referee there has got to make a decision straight away, which, of course, is why they make the uh, picture like a, a television and they yep. say, let's have a look at this. And uh, we've got four different cameras here. Video referee can have a look at it sometimes from four different angles, which makes such a difference. From three, it can look like one sc a score. And uh, from the fourth, you know it's not, or it can be the other way around. This just shows you how, how sharp the refereeing is, because they can make a decision and be spot on, where we can look at it and go, can we have a replay on that one? <laughs> well, you do. <laughs> and we, sometimes you can have 30, 30 minutes deciding. Watch this. Barboza goes, yeah, no, uh, the hands came off. Yes, he so lost control. Maybe no score, but uh, he was right on the arm there, right on it. He was stretching that out. Juju Katami, but uh, face down. So it was Ouchi. Barboza goes for the uh, counter, but left his arm open. And at that throw, that throwing point, the referee was in an ideal situation. He had a good view on that. Yeah, he was right on it. Just a little tiny tap there, hoping somebody missed it. <laughs> <laughs> One nil up for Russia. Uh, for Next one up is going to be Portella. You just mentioned her there, and uh, she's in the under 70 kilos category. She's definitely got to be one that they're hoping is going to pull them back 
in line with this. Lila Lashvili, she's up against. Yeah. Lily Ashvili then knows how important this one is, but uh, she'll, she's got a mountain to climb here with Portella. So much experience. But in saying that, Portella hasn't looked as sharp today. Um, no, like I said, you know, some, some people just come in for the, for the team event, so they're all fresh, ready to go, ready to prove to everybody why they should have been selected for the individuals. Yes. <laughs> and when you've done the individuals, you think, oh, wow. You can sometimes hardly get out of bed. Oh, how they must be feeling. Well, you do, don't you? I mean, you, you really, you, well, that was a kick. <laughs> that kick. Uh, the referees are looking out for the kicks as opposed to sweep or reap. I've seen a few in the individuals being penalised for it. Yeah, yeah. You can actually hear the thud. It's quite gut-wrenching. Shido apiece. Lila Lashvili, very energetic, isn't she? Yeah. So fast. And um, Portela is, is having a hard time keeping up with her. Yeah, I mean, she is. She's very energetic, but no, no attacks. But we haven't seen anything from Portela either. And no. uh, Portela can't even catch her at the moment. Yeah, very busy doing nothing. Well, that's it, isn't it? Uh, you, you get to a situation, you think, I've got to grip up and I've got to go in but it's finding the right angle of approach, the right angle for the attack. We'll both pick up a Shido apiece again. Um, I think for Patella, she's got to really calm this down. She's got to get hold of her opponent and just clamp it. Give herself some breathing space and a chance to set it up. At this moment, she hasn't had a look in, I don't think. No, well, minus 70s can include the under 63s as well. Not quite sure where Lilias Vili stands with that, but uh, she doesn't look quite as heavy does she she doesn't look as heavy but she's uh, a bit taller than her opponents sort of that wiry strength isn't there still no attack we haven't seen a big attack they're both on the sleeves here now what happens if they both get a shido mm. Portello working on the edge there trying to take advantage of her opponent being backed up on the the edge of the contest area both looking at the sleeve grip a little bit scrappy at the moment. Well, I'll be interested to see what the uh, video referees decide to do. I mean, if they're both, neither one of them are attacking, they might both be disqualified. That's all I can think of. Happened once in a major competition. Yep. People weren't very happy about that one. That was in 2017 here, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was, yeah. Two Japanese, yeah. they're heavyweights in the yes. final. That was embarrassing, wasn't it? Well, I mean, they, n neither one of them attacked. What do you do? You can't go on there and, and, and do it for them. Now <laughs> then, that's an attack. No well, hands. That was the strongest attack we've seen all yeah, right yeah, throughout the this match. Contest. Will it be a decider? It's nope. going to let it go on. I think, though, if she... Uh, has a tactical head on that uh, if she thinks, well, if I put another one of those in here, I could just get that third Shido for Patella. And I think she could be right. Another strong attack like that, and I think she'll have it. Well, saved by the bell, that's all I can say. <laughs> yeah. Right, Portella's got a work cut out for her now. She's got to change the tactics. This is a crucial match for the Brazilian team. 
Can she get the now hips Now Portella through? goes yes. in. <laughs> what attack. What attack and uh, she equals it all up. A first attack and she makes it count. Yes, yeah, well, it? really made that one a count, didn't she? So she gets the Wazari for it. It was in golden score. Any score wins. Portella, in the end, experience wins out. One all. Brazil and RGF. <laughs> I just love that coach. I think she's brilliant. She does it. So animated, she said, isn't she? She said to me, she said, I do get a little bit excited sometimes. A <laughs> <laughs> That's an understatement. Yesterday when um, Athema won her bronze medal, the woman cried. She must have cried for an hour. I the know. tears were just falling down her face. The makeup was all over the place. What a state she got herself into. Look at the hips across. Massive hip movement there. She had the arm round the waist. Actually, first time I think she caught her. Come here, she said. <laughs> Get in there. Yeah. Well, they needed that one. They did. It's one all, and uh, now it's game on again. <laughs> I think that's what she's saying as well. <laughs> They're all gone, oh my goodness me. So back to the men's division, and uh, of course, the under 90 kilograms. Next up, Rafael Macheda is going to be next up against Kalamazayev. Kusen Kalamazayev. Uh, how do you think this one will go? Well, Macheda, actually, he came in halfway through this contest. He didn't start. It wasn't in the starting block. And um, was a little bit ropey in the first minute of his contest. But my goodness me, when he came into it, He's a big thrower. Yeah, I mean, it's not quite the same form that we, we know uh, of both the uh, Kalamazea brothers have got, you know, but uh, they're both of them uh, on a third Olympic cycle. Very difficult. Depth of experience there. Machado in white then, Kalamazea in blue. You just sense you're going to get a big throw for Kalamazayev. It's just him being so upright. He gets the grip so effortlessly. And he he's oozing confidence here, isn't he? Yeah, well, that, it, it does, doesn't it? Because uh, you are confident uh, of your throwing ability. But uh, again, they'll have to grip up. And it means that Machado as well, he's got some beautiful technique, Machado. But he's got to uh, get two hands on first. There was a kick for sure mm. big thundering kicks and uh, sometimes i mean it really does bruise yeah it was definitely an ouch moment wasn't it they both get shido yeah it, it was an ouch <laughs> moment there <laughs> machado the looking down yeah, going that does. was sore yeah <laughs> as we would say to him just toughen up man <laughs> get on with it Now, two hands on. Oh, oh well, he, he might get Shido for that, I, I tell you now, because oh. that was not a sweep. No. That was a, a big thundering kick. He definitely chopped him down I mean, there's there. one thing about being tough and hard, isn't there? But uh, did he get it? He didn't no, get he it. No, he didn't. Neither one of them attacked yet. We're a minute and a half into the contest. I think the danger is Kamaze of getting over the top there like he is now. That high collar grip draws down on the head and he's waiting for a reaction. Yeah, look how he's pushing the sleeve across there. Now is he going to use it? He's looking to attack that front leg. Well, just from dominant grips, is he going to... Yeah, so it's just Machado that gets it. But 
on the other hand, Kalamazayev still has an attack. Yeah. Not once. Dominated the grip. I didn't see it as a, a... I saw it as a defensive grip, not an attacking grip as well, just with the way the arms were leaning down. Now he's got the dominant grip again here. Machado can't do anything with it, but uh, Kalamazayev isn't doing anything with it either. That defensive arm under the armpit as well, which is also the problem, and that will give him another pe penalty if he's not careful. Well, some people are saying Shido blue. Mm. If Shido blue, it's Shido white, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. Oh. And that had no rotation, did it? Didn't have no. any rotation. So she's going to let this carry on, I think. Yeah. And, and, and the reason is, Kelimazeev has not attacked one time. Not one time. Three minutes into the contest and no attempt at a throw. Now he has, Uchimata, first time. He's, oh. That's got to be the third. Well, could well be. We're getting close to it, aren't we now? Last, uh, last chance, I think, uh, for Machado. If Kalamazayev gets that high collar grip, it's all over and done with. He'll work on that, use his feet to open up. He'll look for the Uchimata. Yeah, he's just going to make him look bad, isn't yeah. he, now? Make him drop. Oh. And again, half a rotation there uh, just might be it. But like you say, Neil, he hasn't... Kalamazov has not done an attack. He's done a couple of Uchimata attempts, but that's been it throughout the whole... Yeah, he's match. got the third Shido, and, and uh, so... Kalamazayev wins by default. One attack, two attacks. I don't know. Not a bad day at the office, is it, when you only put two in? <laughs> oh, wow. Didn't exert I any think energy. I could do that, actually. I did two attacks in a contest. That would be all right. I'd have to try and get up the high collar. I don't think I could reach, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I always say to my son, do you know, I'd last all of a good... I'd be a good one minute in. After that, I'd just die. <laughs> Look at that grip. <laughs> yeah, end of the sleeve grip. But this is what we're talking about, isn't it? End of the sleeve grip, and it, he pushes it down and across. Mm. But you've got to attack off it. Yeah. So not much uh, there to show from a technical point of view. And so we go into the next contest, which is a ladies contest plus 70s Beatrice Souza this is going to be one for Brazil you would hope wouldn't you well yeah you'd say wouldn't you and uh, she's up against Vladimirova and uh, Vladimirova good fighter and uh, she showed that she's got spirit but uh, well Souza will come out she'll tower above her here oh gosh yeah and considering Sosa fought yesterday, she was looking good today. She really is looking good. Yeah, when she uh, she has a dominant grip, and then when she decides to attack, it's great. Let's hope uh, it's the same here in this bronze medal match. Two Brazilians were on the rostrum yesterday in the individual competition. Two days on the trot out here. Well, for Salza, that is. Mm. Cool, that was a heavy blow there, well, wasn't it? it? Isn't it? You know, uh, what's the difference between... Uh, people often ask me the difference between a reap and a sweep, and a reap 
comes towards the support leg. A sweep catches the feet as they come together. And a kick is what we're seeing at the moment, you know, where no leg is moving, no movement. And she's got the double lapel grip there, being allowed to do it. Trying to draw that leg across for the big hat eye into the Makakomi. So it's a controlling, but like you say, not doing anything really with it. She's got the high collar grip, the elbow tucked in nicely there. So she's controlling well, dominating the pace of the match. Vladmirova can't get her head up and she's uh, not put an attack in yet. She's going to go Shido, Vladimirova. This contest is to bring it all evens again. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like watching the screen and getting close to that yeah. through that arm over and I step back <laughs> thinking it was going to connect. Well, Oh, There's there an Ashiguruma there and uh, straight into the hole down and at last. And she's not going to let that go, is she? She's going to hold it for 10 seconds there. It's nearly there. So two all. <laughs> it keeps it alive, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it certainly does. <laughs> So we're going to see the next two contests anyway fought, that's for sure. Definitely. Well, we have David Moore up that's coming up. He's not been looking so good today. No, well, the whole championships he's been struggling, hasn't he? His teammate Rafael Silva gets to the final, and, well, he has been struggling in the competition, but he'll be out to prove something here. If he could get a team... Ma uh, medal that would be amazing for him yeah i mean it's been between silver and mura hasn't it for all the way through the qualification what a lovely ashi garuma there and it was off the two lapels but follows it through immediately there into the hold down the world bronze medalist Nice throw. Yeah, she kept nice. her posture, didn't she? Really good posture very, very to it. Powerful. Everything was nice about it. Everything. Might have got the hip on if she was holding the sleeve, but uh, made sure she got good lift with it. Because a lot of the time with the heavyweights, they come across and as they start to rotate, nine out of ten, it turns into a makakomi, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, she kept the hands on. That's, uh, that was the good thing. We're going to see a new heavyweight for RGF, Tovrabov, about to come out. David Mora is his opponent, and uh, it'll be an interesting uh, to see how David Mora comes out to this match. A swap over of the referees there. He's done a bit as well. Just a bit. <laughs> Do you know, I'd put him in a kit and put my money on him, to be honest. <laughs> David Moura of Brazil in white, Tovrabov of RJF in blue, and this match is crucial. Oh, quite intense this is now, isn't it? Like you say, it's a crucial match. Yeah, it goes for the Sumigeshi there, Tovrabov. Big thundering right arm over the top.
just find myself holding my breath here. Just, it's quite intense, the build-up to this. An attempt of uh, Tom and Aggie there. Yeah, I don't think he'll have too many of those. Uh, you can't, uh, you don't very often see heavyweights actually doing Yoko Tomai. I think the hardest thing for him is getting back up, isn't it, afterwards? <laughs> it is for me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was a really low ochi, wasn't it? Which is, I've seen it about four or five times today. It's a new Vogue technique there. Very low, just takes the bottom of the calf. Oh, oh. lovely change of direction there from Mora. Gets a Wazari on the board, but look at that. He's made a mistake here. And Tovarabov has come on top of him. And, uh, oh, has he got out? He has got out. Oh, and uh, on seven or eight seconds. Oh, look at that. He puts his head down there and says, oh, my God, I nearly made the biggest mistake in my life. Oh, gosh. That would have been an absolute disaster, wouldn't it, for <laughs> it him? Was. He oh. just held He had his hands, uh, head in his hands there, he did, uh, Mora. We'll see it again. He, he, massive score, great score. That's a heart attack moment. Well, they've wasn't taken it, it off, uh, so uh, it um, obviously didn't get the landing there. It looked uh, like it was a score from our angle. Video referee had a look from a different angle. Oh, nice so now Uchimata. he's starting to go to work, isn't he? Yeah, that was a nice entry of the Uchimata. Shido over above so from a score to a hold down no score no hold down <laughs> hard to keep up really isn't it on this one <laughs> um Murug's getting a nice grip there he's got that left hand on the lapel it's what he likes he's got the space as well Oh, oh, is it going to be almost close, isn't it? Yeah, he's close. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of sign language going on there, wasn't there? I think no matter what, what language you, you're talking about, I think it's get up there, get in there, and get it done. <laughs> yeah, and, and get out quick. And get out quick, yeah. Big arm over the back. He's going to attack again here now, Murat. Oh, no, no, no. Tovarabov doing well, though. He's still very dangerous out there. There's no doubt about it. I find myself holding my breath, wondering which way this is going to go. Considering the day that David Mora has had, you just want him to win this one because it really does deserve to have a good day at the office rather than a bad one. Oh, he changes it to right, see an Aggie. Great change of direction. A, de a better display of judo from David Mora. That score's gone back on the board there, and it definitely went off, didn't it? Yeah, it did. It wasn't <laughs> not, there before. Not just me, and I was assuming there that... Uh, no, Neil, you're not having it. a senior moment. No, I thought <laughs> I was having a senior moment just for a second. I thought maybe I keep blinking and something is changing. Now, Mura has the sleeve. It's right against left in the fight. And he's got also Wazeri on the board. I was just about to say, he doesn't need to go in. <laughs> needs to be moving, needs to play for the win. Just get away from him. Oh, gosh. He's going to get Shido now. Well, yeah, you'd take that any day, wouldn't you? <laughs> 15 on. seconds to go. Mura's going to just give a Shido away for sure. Yep. Tovarabov's going to come in. He just actually, I think, better tactics for Mura rather than running, just block out. There's the Shido. No, oh, he's going to be at him. Oh. Yeah. Sumageshi there, <laughs> Tovarabov, and he falls into the hold down. It's all over. He's given the ip on for it, and uh, Brazil. <laughs> 
Go ahead. Hey, gosh. That was a bit exciting. You can breathe Maybe now. I, I you can, can breathe. breathe. <laughs> hey, goodness me. <laughs> Well, it's down to this last one. Well, the last one, it is down to the last one, but uh, the last one, if Brazil win it, they've won the bronze. If RJF win it, it's 3-3, three, three, and then they'll pull it out the hat for which category fights again. We might see this fight again, or <laughs> any of the categories can be pulled out. We've seen people overturn a loss all within a minute. So David Moura pulls a good performance out there and he'll be glad about that. Well, he's played his part yeah, when it no, really counted. Really, he has. And uh, yeah, he'll be so happy about that. We've seen him with uh, such good form uh, in all of the Grand Prix Grand Slams and uh, regular medal winner. This was a right-handed uh, seeing Aggie here, let's have a look at the landing. We're going to see the landing right onto his side. So the landing there judged to be a Wazari, and that was the one. And uh, then he fell into the hold down, and it was the uh, Russian that uh, came in for the Sumageishi. In the end, just gave it up. He knew it had gone. It was last second, I think. I think it's going to be really hard for Nascimento against Konkina. World, she got seventh in the world championships and world rank 23. She's a strong, strong Russian. I think this is going to be going to be an interesting one, isn't it? The Russians have a, a you know, for a chance of equaling this all up and uh, making it 3 3, and then uh, we'll explain what happens then if it does go 3 3. Nascimento is just about to step out. Even the music building up here is intense, isn't it? All part of the build up. So it comes down to the uh, last match. Nascimento, 57 kilograms for ladies. Anastasia Konkina of uh, Russian Judo Federation just about to step out and she could save this for the uh, RJF. <laughs> no pressure. They're all holding their heads there. They're all like that. No, <laughs> no pressure whatsoever. Oh, gosh. Well, if Nascimento wins this, what a fight. What a win this will be for us. It'll be massive. It really will. A massive will. win. Nascimento White, remember, for Brazil. Conquina, RJF in blue. Big arm over here, and uh, Conquina straight into the attack. Has she got it? Has she got the uh, strangle? She might just have it here. Oh. If she's underneath the neck here, this is going to equal it all up. If she gets the submission, she's trying to get the leverage here. Nascimento does well. Nascimento has a mountain to climb with Conquina. Look at her. She's just so physically strong. She hasn't got started yet, has she? Nascimento's really struggling here. Arm over. Conquina. Is she going to switch it? Yes, she does. Oh! oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. <laughs> well, tell me what she did there. She went and tapped that front leg there. And there was the Uchimata just hovering around. <laughs> just hovering. Just, just hovering. waiting. Just waiting for the take. <laughs> well, she'll be saying, Conquina, just do that one again. Next time I'll be ready for it. That was a nice exchange there. The Uchimata was so close. Credit to Conquina. Well, Conquina knows she's got to go for this. Yeah. This is all or bust, isn't it? It really is. Nascimento's doing well here. She really is. Nascimento going for the winning match for Brazil. Conquina 
is going for the, well, to equal it all up. And then it's all about pulling it out of a hat for the next category. Well, the category that fights again. And it's a golden score match if it's all equal. Yeah, just like a sudden death, isn't it? Well, it is sudden death. Mm. Uh, we, saw, we saw it with the Georgian, with Shrikishvili earlier, who got overturned, did a brilliant hip on, and then uh, got, got thrown about a minute later. Who can keep their nerve here, coming up to the halfway mark? Well, considering there's a lot of pressure. Oh on no, Nassimenta. she's got her in a hold down. Oh my goodness me. Nascimento has her in a hold down. Kamishu Okutami. And that was unbelievable. Can you believe that? That's unbelievable. She's got a Wazari on the board already. The seconds are ticking away. She's going to hold her for the hip on. And Brazil have done it. <laughs> They've got the bronze medal. <laughs> the odds were stacked against him on that match, Absolutely, wasn't it? yeah. Nascimento, that was incredible. Conquina can't believe it. And look at the Brazilian squad there have gone absolutely mental. Oh, wow. <laughs> She's fighting back the tears, isn't she? Yeah, you wait uh, till Nascimento gets into that little group there because they are just going to go berserk. Look at this. <laughs> oh. Well, they definitely know how to celebrate, that's oh, all I, I can say. I get a funny feeling that there might be, uh, well, I was going to say they're going to go out on the town. They can't do that. They're just going to hit the minibar. I think they'll find bar. a way. Yeah, just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the hotel bar. <laughs> 4 2, Brazil win. What a turn up for the book that was. That was a brilliant win for Brazil. There's no doubt about it. Nascimento, definitely the, the hero there. Yeah, Nascimento had a mountain to climb and uh, Conquina came out all guns blazing and it was never to be. And well, Nascimento just turns her over. We will have a look at it. It will show it a little bit later. And uh, she turns Conquina into Kami Shihokatami. She wasn't going out of that. But Nascimento had some real nice judo there. That was a couple of uchi, uchimatas, the Ouchikari, and then that transition was like, it was slow, but it was so precise, wasn't it? it Knew was exactly effortless. what she wanted, and, and you know, renowned for their Nawaza as well. But I think we've seen some great Nawaza, <laughs> some great. Look at that. <laughs> She's absolutely nuts, isn't she, Rosie? Just love her. Great celebrations, <laughs> Nascimento. <laughs> Surprises the odds. Well, we're going to see how she did it here. Nascimento is the one that attacks here. They go outside, come back in. But watch this. This turnover here, and uh, we've seen it so often here onto the felt but uh, this time she just seemed to well, it was like a junior turnover it was wasn't a junior it? turnover she caught the shoulder and it was just a very soft turn it wasn't aggressive at all it was just spot on the angle that she took her yeah conquina comes back into the area watch this uh, and we teach this to the kids control the head arm underneath the uh, armpit there and just put pressure on to send them over here we see it from a different angle. Konkina goes over, straight into the uh, Kazure, Kamishi Okutami. Such a simple, basic move, but so effective. 
And then she readjusts the hands, doesn't she, when she's over? <laughs> Massive celebrations. Nascimento, the hero, what can I say? Absolute hero. Everybody played their part, of course they did. It's team. And it's not just about this match, it's about all the other matches that went before it. Great celebrations, and while the uh, Brazilians celebrate the finalists are preparing. One more look. Barboza, Portela, Machado, Souza, Mora, Nascimento. What a wipeout. Uh, yeah, wow, fantastic. Uh, the uh, Russian Judo Federation is Ayachev, Lilishvili, Kalamazayev, of course. Vladimirova, and uh, you've got uh, Tojedrov and uh, Konkina from the RJF, but uh, it wasn't to be. Brazil, 4-2. Here's the final, and uh, we just quick look at the uh, finalists there and a few new names. Hashimoto, Zoe, Nagasawa, Akiba, Kagura, and uh, Fanakubo who's uh, fighting in the under 57s. There she is. We're gonna have a, a little look now just to see how they got through to this uh, final. Let's have a look at the highlights. France. So under 57s, remember we start 57s, but uh, we've uh, we've got uh, Debro of France, Olivia, uh, Oliver, Fontaine, Demier, Gahi, of course, and Geba. And uh, it should be an absolutely brilliant final. These have all fought out of their skin to reach this final here against Japan. They have their work cut out. The one that's really impressed me is Gaba. Yeah, he G has been amazing. Um, yeah, that's definitely uh, one to watch, see how he gets on. This is how they got to the final, like you say, there he is. Some brilliant judo all the way through. Starting with the under 73 kilos category. Royal Camacho of Spain starts off. Then they'll uh, swap over two matches in, three matches in, should I say. Hashimoto, we're going to see him for the first time out today. Didn't have a good individual competition, so he'll be out here wanting to uh, show what he can really do. Number one ranked in the world, but Gaba, Gaba, is it Gaba? Gaba certainly will have something to say about that. Here they come, France. It's not going to be easy for France, but you never know with teams, though, do you? It team. just, it doesn't. It's not always on paper. That's true. Strongest uh, team on paper, 
doesn't uh, always uh, win through. No, teams throw up so many different surprises, don't they? So as they line up, bow to uh, each other, bow to Jizeki, and then it's game on. 73 kilos first. Hashimoto up first against Geba. Kaba starts off with a Cianagi attempt here, but uh, watch out for the Sodi yeah. and the Cianagis from Hashimoto. <laughs> this is why I'm, I just love about this Gabba. He's so look at him, yes, on the Gabba, belt. He, he is, isn't he? He's just so explosive. Nothing to lose. False attack. Yeah. There's one, one pace and that's fast. <laughs> that's it, yeah. He doesn't know any other pace. Just Hashimoto slows him down or catches up to him, is in trouble, but such wiry strength. Well, first time that uh, Gabba will have uh, fought in a, a world team final. Can you imagine that? Being put into the team, here he is in a world team final. It's his spirit, his entry in here, it's really all or nothing. It's not about being tactical, or he just wants yeah, to win. Yeah, nothing to lose, is it? Nothing, nothing to, to lose. lose whatsoever. And you can tell that with his attitude. Now, Hashimoto starts to work. Oh, and this is the dangerous bit. Japanese very good in their transition. Great change of direction there from Hashimoto. Yeah, beautiful spin into that one, wasn't it? Everybody that's uh, gr uh, taken a grip of Garba, though, you can tell that they're unsettled because uh, he's uh, really agile on his feet. Now look at the pressure he's putting on now, Hashimoto. Puts pressure on them towards the edge and then changes direction. Action, reaction. Gabba just hasn't stopped since he started. Constantly moving, constantly changing direction, reaction all the time. You get exhausted just watching him. Being backed up again here. Watch the um, Hashimoto looking for the action off the edge there. And now again as well. Picked up a couple of penalties, so not so keen to push them outside. Yep. So good pressure there from Hashimoto. Might be a Shido here for Gabba. Yeah, I think so. Gabba taking the, the long walk back. I think he was hoping the referee might forget yeah, no, about it. Yeah, he might forget about it, but I don't think so. <laughs> 
I like the way Hashimoto moves his head, bobs his head up and down, doesn't he? Just as if to say, how dare you? Exactly. Do you not know who I am? <laughs> Sinagi! Oh, right in there. Swaggers back to the centre. Starting to climb on top of this Hashimoto. <laughs> Taitoshi on the right, seeing Aggie on the left, does a Sodi Surakamigoshi both sides. Second penalty up there to Gaba. Now he's attacking. Koshi Garuma this time on the left. He's going through the Gokyo at the moment. Well, I think he is left and right. Gaba realizes he's uh, fighting somebody just a little bit different here. But in fair credit to him, we're in golden score. Although it's been a battle for him, there's no score yet. If you're going to steal a match, this is when you do it. Because <laughs> it doesn't well, make him angry. <laughs> I have seen worse things happen, uh, you know, and uh, less surprising things happen in team matches. Now, oh, so to Gary. <laughs> Needs another couple of uh, strong attacks. Hashimoto, nice as she was up. Taitoshi again. Oh, is that going to be it? It won't be. It won't be far off. No, it's building up, isn't it now? <laughs> I'd laugh my socks off if he catches him in this golden score. Well, this is last chance, isn't it? Last <laughs> chance now. Is he going to switch it again? It's all feet. Now, where's he going to go from here? Been oh. backed up himself here, Ashimoto. <laughs> Still looking for the way in. Just leaning against a Gabba. <laughs> You've got to admire his spirit. There's no doubt about it. It's still game on here in this first <laughs> contest. <laughs> Japan have won four nil on both their matches, actually in the early rounds. Gabba now starting to look a bit like a rag doll out there, isn't he? Well, yeah, he is. I, I just Hashimoto just can't get him on his side, can he? Can't uh, just can't do it. Make a score. I'm sure he'd like to just get this finished. Yeah. There's the Sienagi again. That's going to be it. I'm almost sure now that's going to be three Shidos to Gabba. So it's going to be three Shidos to Gabba. Japan are going to be one nil up here. Well, definitely a man that fought out of his skin in that one, didn't he, Gabo? Well, and, and all the way through easier. the day, you said he'd, he'd done very, very well, you know, and there, fought a good tactical match there. He was up against the world number one. Not the number one in Japan, of course. Oh, no, it's <laughs> world number one, but not the world, yeah. Yeah. Hashimoto's going, what happened there? <laughs> Didn't went... go quite according to plan, uh, probably. <laughs> no, I don't think he thought he was going to go to Golden Score. I really don't. 
Well, the team competition is a great time to blood your youngsters, and that's what's happened here. But uh, he, he was going in different directions, but uh, very difficult to catch him and throw him onto his back. Gaba then comes away unscathed. Three Shidos in the end gave the match to Hashimoto. Next up, under 70 kilos category for ladies. And uh, we've got Nizoe here up against Gahi. And Gahi will be hoping to equal this one up. Well, the French will yeah, with definitely. Gahi. This is going to be a, a, not an easy match between both these. They're very strong athletes. Next contest, women under 70 kilogram category. World champion coming into this World Championships, Gahi. Right against left here, Uchimata there from Nizoi. This is quite awkward. It looks awkward because it's right against left there. But now the big arms over from from uh, Gahi and uh, Nizoi just drifted out the area. Then well, she definitely didn't like the overhand grip from Gahi. Yeah, gets the uh, Shido for it. Just drifted out there. It's on the retreat, isn't she, Nazoe? And uh, Gahi, definitely the stronger here. Definitely piling the pressure once again goes off, but it's, yeah. it's the less of two evils. You either go out get a pe penalty or you go forward and get spanked but two Shido's now on the board and we've just gone past first minute this could be the first uh, contest that the Japanese lose Well, Nazui and Gai, they have had head-to-heads. It's been 4-3. Nazui in the driving seat with this, winning four times. The last time they were in was in Paris Grand Slam in 2020, where Gahi lost to Nazui. She's obviously turning that around here today, well, isn't she? Well, she is, yeah, absolutely. That bigger hand there, Nazui doesn't like it at all. Looking for the hips across here. On oh. the retreat all the time there, Nizo, isn't she? She's really finding it uh, um, a problem. Guy is all over, isn't she? Yeah, she Has is. Has been right from the beginning. This will be a great contest for Gahi to win. An absolutely crucial one. Oh, that was close. Ashi uh, Garuma there. So close. Oh, that was she, strong. She walked right onto that.
Well, we've seen contests of two halves before, and uh, one can be winning it, and then the other one starts to pull it back, especially as they start to get tired. So it's not over here for Nizoe. I think Nizoe gave her a, Gahi a bit of a wake-up call with that last exchange. Oh, definitely. Yeah, really. Very close. She does it again Ooh. and almost gets countered. Gahi this time tries the counter. We're just coming up to the last minute now. And um, like you say, it's been a contest for two halves here. But um, Gahi still, I think, is up on the attacks has played a more dominant part in this contest. But there has been glimmers of what Nazoe can do. And yeah, she's I mean, uh, and she's got technique, so that makes her dangerous right the way to the last bell. And again, she's in there again for it. Now Gahi, oh, Ooh. now in this Nizoe. Nizoe is really dangerous when she gets the hand in the inside off that lapel and then gets the second hand on. She steps across and Gahi seems to fall over. Started so strong Gahi, piling the pressure on Nizoe and well now anybody's match this. Not so clear cut. We thought it was going to be clear cut. Still two penalties up for Nizoe. Now she's dominating the grip. Gahi. Oh! <laughs> Not quite sure what she was uh, thinking of there. <laughs> no, that was a weird one. It, it looked like she was attempting a Marotti Gary or something. It did. Which, um, that would have been halfway through, decided not to. Oh, Uchimata! Oh! <laughs> wow, what an Uchimata that was! Nizoe <laughs> throws Gahi there. Gahi dominated the whole first half of this contest. What can you say about that? Have you come down yet? All you can say is 5-3. 5-3. For Nizoe. Wow. Yeah. Can you believe the turnaround there? Well, that I mean, she was uh, coming across for the Ashiguruma onto the outside of the leg. This time she decides to go onto the inside of the leg. Someone with that much experience as well. Yeah. It just shows well, you how yeah, easy no, it can does. make a it, Absolutely it did. I mean, you know, the, the whole tactics of that uh, contest changed. And the Zoe was two Shidos on the board. Uh, that meant one more mistake. I mean, she went outside the area, gave two Shidos away, I think. Yeah. She was like two Shidos down for most of the contest. And there was never any tactical ploy from Gahi. No, uh, you're exactly right. And it's a team match. Here's the Uchimata. Look at this. And she gets uh, rotation on this Uchimata. Oh. And, uh, you know, so some new Uchimatas go high. This one was rotational. And look at the pull on the sleeve. And uh, Gahi puts her hand down, first of all, but she whips over. And it's all about the rotation. Look at the Kazushi. That Kazushi on that sleeve grip there. And that left hand over the top there. Start to work together here. And Gahi knows she's in trouble at this stage. And then she pushes off that support leg and rotates Gahi onto her back. 
Amazing, huh? Yeah, it was great. Nice. Really good. Spinning Uchimata, and uh, it needs really good hands working in the right way to make it work. And it also needs a rotational movement as well. Brilliant stuff. 2 0 up to Japan. Next up, Nagasawa up against Damia in the under 90 kilos category. Again, Damia for me today has fought well. He's had a good performance and can he sort of up his game like Gabba has it? So be interesting to see how this one pans out. Well, Japan could uh, sew this up with the next two wins, but uh, like you say, Damier fighting well, Fontaine as well is there. And uh, of course, if Japan win the next two, then the other two don't fight. Nagasawa is in white here, and Damier is in blue. Or should I say Japan in white, France in blue. Left against right again. Doing some good judo today, Nagasawa. Set for the uh, Uchimata. Yeah, totally agree with you. He's been an absolute class act, hasn't he? Um, you said earlier that it's a, a lot of it is to do with posture. It is. It's to do with uh, posture, and uh, you can use the posture for defence as well as attack. Tomanagi. Traditional Tomanagi, that one. Not, mm. not Yoko Tomoi. Demiet gets a Shido. Has to attack. Demiet is actually quite wiry, so... You sort of hold your breath thinking, is he going to just slip that Koichi Koso Tagari in? The long legs, he's got such reach. Yeah, you can see this is an awkward left to right situation, it's, can't you? Damia yeah. just waiting to uh, slip Nagasawa's Uchimata, but uh, that uh, Tomanagi there wasn't good enough. He'll have to get movement. Ashiwaza there from uh, Nagasawa. Nagasawa now, is he going to follow through on the ground? I'm surprised he didn't there. Really surprised. I thought he would most probably want to finish that off. Well, once again, the Frenchman getting ragged about here, isn't he? Well, I'm surprised. Uh, just looking at your note there, you know, Clergé, of course, uh, is somebody who's beaten Nagasawa twice, you know, so it would have been a really important match, of course, to win for the French, but uh, opted for the younger Damiet. Uchimata goes the same way every time and uh, he was looking for the tip there, wasn't he, was, he Damien? Yeah, definitely. You can't get too overconfident with Damien, there's no doubt about it. 
he can, although he looks like he's getting ragged about in this contest, he's still, there's an dangerous. element of it's dangerous. It's possible for him to score, sure. So off the floor for sure, Nagasawa trying to double the pal. I think uh, he was kind of half thinking standing for an Aggie, but uh, anyway, or Yoko Garuma when it's uh, a little bit closer to the ground. Tom and Aggie. Two penalties up there to Damier, two Shidos, one more and it's uh, gonna be finished. So the work rate of Nagasawa, too much for Damier. He's gotta really start to go to work. Uchimata again, oh! Well, did he use his head there in order to avoid? The aerial awareness there of Damier though, he was going over and managed to spin himself around. Well, it was that a head dive from uh, the Japanese and, uh, well, or was it um, Damier just pushing the head into, to, this is going to be a really interesting decision here. Yeah. Glad I'm not on the top table. <laughs> where, where you look where Damier's he, um, hand is, it is right on the back of the head, yeah, back of the shoulder. Yeah, well, I don't think you could, uh, you can't really give Nagasawa the uh, Honsokamaki for diving, not when Damier was pushing the head down, so... Probably best just let it go. Yeah, I think you're right there. Difficult, you know, you're on that top table and you've got to make a decision like that and it could make or break uh, this world final. So uh, if you can't make a decision, just let it go on. And uh, that's exactly what they've done. Best decision there. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, well, difficult, really difficult. Who to give it to? Now he's going to get penalised himself in Nagasawa. That is exactly... Oh, look, there. scores now. What a wasari that was. Pulled that out of nowhere. Nice. That was so low to the ground, that was. Very sharp, wasn't it? Yeah, what Real a great tewaza. hand movement. Great Tewaza, that was. Real opportune stuff, that. That's something that happens. You can't really train for that other than training your reflex actions. But uh, Nagasawa is a Wazari up here and coming up to the last 30 seconds. Oh, Ashiwaza! It's there, it's Straight there. there, he's got it. Oh my goodness me. He's that was on it. though. <laughs> <laughs> it was on. <laughs> now he's uh, attacking now, just looking at the seconds ticking away. It's gonna go 3-0 Japan. So that was a real good bit of judo there from this man here. Nagasawa manages Tewaza from very low down. Turned a situation, well, it's not an impossible situation, but a very difficult situation turned it to his advantage. Kosei Inui there will be so pleased with the, what's happening here with this Japanese team. Look at the uh, quick reaction there. He, he followed him over as well and uh, just uses the hands to make sure that he rotates. Ashiwaza, and then continues the movement. Brilliant. 
Look at the little tap with Yashi. Just takes away that front foot there. And uh, Damien just uh, rolls over. Although he was going over, Damien did really well to react what could have been an Osakomi as well. Yeah, it could have been an outside Komi, could very, have been an very Ippon, sharp. but uh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> a, I don't know what that's saying there. <laughs> it says all that. Like. I know what it's saying. He's saying that hurt. Oh, <laughs> I'll feel that one tomorrow. <laughs> you will do. Next uh, fight up, still three fights on the board, but uh, if Japan win the next one, it's going to be all over. Mm. And uh, Akiba, plus 70 kilograms, is going to be up against Fontaine of France. Can France pull a contest back? It's going to be a tough one for Fontaine. She's only 19 years of age, and she has little or very no experience with fighting Japanese. And um, the last time she fought one was when she was at the Junior World Championships back in 2019 and um, lost to Takahashi. But she's a big girl. And yeah, and, yeah, and the French always putting their youngsters out. They're not scared to... Uh, blood their youngsters in big competitions. Well, I think she'll want to, uh, Akuba will want the inside grip there, elbow inside, start the movement, then pop across. There she does, pops across, and yeah, Fontaine just waiting for it, thinking, nope. You're not having that. Gonna bring you back. Arm over the back here from Fontaine. Well, considering Fontaine's 19 years of age, throughout the day she has fought extremely well. There's in such a, a mature manner as well with the, the senior athletes, especially when you, you see the lineup that the French do have. This will boost her confidence and experience being exposed to a, a level of tournament like this. Yeah, Akuba just trying to keep moving all the time here, trying to hit that front hip. And there's the Ouchi there. Fontaine just managing to stop the turn. So it's Fontaine that gets the Shido. Oh. So this time Fontaine attacks. She's quite agile for such a, a big lady. She's very agile and she's sturdy on her feet as well. Got good balance. Yeah, well, they've got her here to be in a major final and give her experience. Like you say, 19 years of age. Akuba looking for the ashes. Ashy was her, the small foot sweeps. Asahina, the new world champion, she's, uh, I thought they might put her in, but uh, opted not to. And that was a good attack as well there from Fontaine. Yeah, that is a surprise. They haven't got Asahina here in this um, Yeah, we know Sonne's not going to do it, didn't yeah. we? You know, but uh, Asahina, I thought, well, they might just uh, shove her in. Yeah, because she's not going to the game, so... Ideal, wouldn't it be? Very little impact on that one. Well, wasn't yeah, it? I don't think. I think so it was uh, a little bit. Um, 
hoping for the best. There it is. So that's the uh, very low Siotoshi movement there. And uh, Fontaine just manages to uh, stop the rotation. Well, Akiba really has to try and move her opponent. She's, it's just like hitting a brick wall, isn't it? When they stand still, so solid. And she is quite strong on her feet, Fontaine. Good balance. So the only way you're going to do it is by moving her. Well, that Siotoshi was uh, quite close. Now she can get her moving. That's a uh, much better attempt that time to yes. try to take her off to the side. Might just be a second penalty up to Fontaine here. Second one up, and now Akiba will uh, try and just uh, move. That was uh, no rotation whatsoever there uh, from Fontaine. Well, we haven't seen the sudden death situation that can happen in a team match and uh, will probably happen at the Olympics. So now Fontaine goes to work. Akiba, again, like I said, needs to just move, keep moving all the time. Siatoshi. Mm. Well, she's putting all the work in. Fontaine really needs to now put one or two attacks in herself. She's, she's played far too long a waiting game in here, isn't she? And um, It's going to go into golden score, isn't it? And you're right. She, I mean, she is. She's just waiting for it, trying to, hoping that she can counter. That's where she can be dangerous on that grip at the back. That was close, wasn't it? Mm. And uh, Fontaine there decides to have a go at uh, a counter. Wasn't far off. <laughs> this time on the uh, same lapel and uh, collapses underneath. Well, Fontaine has to put another attack in now. Yeah, she says, come oh. back here. And now, really goes for it there, Fontaine. She realizes that uh, if she doesn't, it's, it's all over for France. Yeah. Got to give a 10 out of 10 there. There was a bit of effort that came out. Yeah, no, of absolutely. Yeah, no, she was she's very, going for it. Very, very close. She gets on that belt. Well, a minute in now to Golden Score, and Akiba starting to go back to work, and now. Can Fontaine re... Uh, can she come back into it? Can she readjust? <laughs> Trying to pick her up there to take her backwards. <laughs> Akiba says, what have I got to do? She's oh. got to keep on moving. And now Fontaine goes down. Same, same technique. Akiba says, let's get this on. One minute 28 into golden score. It's a long time out there for them, isn't it? Especially for Fontaine. She most probably hasn't had a lot of experience of actually going into golden score. Not as a youngster in junior level events. 
Well, let's count the attacks now uh, from the last ones. That's one up there to Akiba. And, uh, well, it might be... Might be over and done with Might now. be over and done with. It might just uh, be finished. Yep, that's it is. Japan have done it. And uh, so, 4 nil Japan. Four rounds. Oh, and uh, it's been 4 0 every time. And well, Akiba. <laughs> Obviously, very delighted with that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the, uh, the Japanese squad celebrating a different way to the Brazilians. Uh, yes. A bit more polite. <laughs> Bit more reserved. Yeah, a little bit more say. reserved. A little bit more reserved. Didn't go absolutely nuts. But I think really when they came into this final, I think they were confident, quietly confident in, in taking the gold. Might not have been as easy, but I think they were coming in to win gold. Yeah, I think they were. Uh, the interesting thing is, uh, like I say, the ones, uh, number ones we know are at home waiting to uh, fight at the Olympics. The number twos were here. Number ones in the world, world champions were still here, competing for world titles. They won world titles, clearly ahead in the medals in the individuals. And, uh, and now they, uh, once again, on the third occasion, have won the world team title. The world mixed team champions, of course, are Japan. They're gonna be a team hard to beat in Tokyo, the Olympic games, aren't they? Yeah, they are. And of course, it's going to be the whole squad that uh, climbs up there onto that rostrum because it's the whole squad. It's a squad match. France got a silver medal. They will still celebrate. There was still a great performance from France. Oh, definitely, especially with the team that they put together. There was some, a lot of youngsters there making their debut here at the, this World Championship. So definitely a good account. Silver medal is nothing to be sniffed at, is it? Definitely not. And uh, World Team Championships yet again today. I, I think, you know, probably had better matches in the early rounds and uh, in the semi finals. But uh, it, it, it sometimes goes like that. Sometimes it goes to the wire. Today it didn't. 4 0 Japan, 4 0 in semi final, 4 0 in their uh, second round match. Unbeaten. No, uh, nobody got a match uh, on them. So this is where all the parties start now. The celebrations begin. Yeah, they can't go out uh, of their bubble to celebrate, unfortunately. But what a fantastic end to what's been really a brilliant week of judo, hasn't it? It's been amazing. Yeah, it has. It's been absolutely amazing. And uh, well, Japan, win the gold, France the silver. The bronze medals go to Brazil and to Uzbekistan. Scoreline doesn't always tell the whole story. There were some pretty close matches uh, in there. Well, definitely Hashimoto got a bit of a run for his money, didn't no, he? Absolutely. He had to work, he had to work for Yeah, that. they all had to work for yeah. it and uh, it didn't come easy. No. So stay with us because we have the, uh, we're gonna see some of the action shots first of all, uh, but before, and this is uh, gonna lead into the medal presentation, of course, still to come. Thank you. 
This always amazes me how they get everybody on this podium. You're just hoping it's reinforced. Just so many names that will uh, step on there as a, as a squad. And I'm talking about uh, Uzbekistan, Brazil, Japan, and of course, France. And leading the Brazilian team in Nascimento. Well, she was key, wasn't she, Nascimento? She, that she was absolutely key. All jostling there for positions. It's a lot of people to get onto that third place podium. Yeah, this is uh, this is always the interesting one. How quickly <laughs> they can get these uh, medals distributed, and uh, of course naming the whole squad. Virtually impossible. This is where they have several people that uh, hand out the medals here <laughs> and uh, make it as efficient as they possibly can. So Brazil step up there and uh, wow. What a performance from Brazil, of course, Boboa, Portela, Macheda, Souza, Moura, Nascimento, but then there's Rafael Silva, there's all the other ones that uh, were, were there just in case. They've uh, all stepped up as well. Team Brazil performed so well at uh, Nascimento was the uh, key to the uh, final match. What a final match that was. Uzbekistan, they're up there. Namanov, Machinova, Zandriev, Kurganbeyeva, Turchiev, Aminova, The whole squad up there, and uh, of course the squad led by Ilias Iliadis, and he's made such a difference, Definitely. such a difference. Yeah. Bozbeyev up there, Boltebeyev. So many times that uh, Japan uh, fought France in major tournaments, but it's normally, well, it has been uh, before in men's and then in women's competition, but now it's mixed men's and women's. It's the first time it will be in the Olympic Games. And uh, it's just, I think it's a, a really great combination. Oh, definitely. It's a, a, a great matchup. Three women, three men, perfect. Yes, exactly. Gabi, Gahi, Demier, Fontaine, Oliver, and uh, Dubois, who have, uh, well, 
they were the ones that fought in the final, but then the rest of the squad, just everybody there. Mare there. Of course, he didn't fight in Did the final. Did he not final. fight at all? I think he fought in the early rounds, The Marais. early round, yeah. What a great judoka, and uh, of course, Jean-Luc Rouget there presenting medals to his own team. Team captain, I wonder. Yeah. Ha <laughs> Very proud moment for Rouget there. Yeah, proud moment for Roger. Jean-Luc Roger was uh, the first ever men's world champion uh, for France. Mr. Marius Visa, our president of the International Judo Federation. Well, just uh, what he's done for world judo. This team event, it'll be the first time ever that a team event has been in the Olympic Games. And uh, the Olympic Games, of course, have been here since 1964. A mixed team event will be there. And you can thank Marius Visa for that. Yeah, there's been a lot of work in developing and really bringing our, our sport to the forefront of what is not only politically correct, but in a way that it's embraced everything that we all believe in, the, the values of our sport, isn't it? Well, it is, and uh, equal values as well. And uh, that's uh, what he had to push forwards, of course, which is why we've got three men, three ladies' weight categories, and uh, yeah, absolutely equal status. Japan, the champions Hashimoto, Nizoe, Nagasawa, Akiba, Kagura, and uh, Kanakuba. And of course, the rest of their squad that are, are all lined up there. I'm just looking at that and thinking, I hope that lid's on firmly in that trophy. You hope it was? Sorry? The, the lid was on firmly on that trophy. <laughs> so now the national anthem of Japan. supreme well I hope they're all not going to try and get onto the top of the rostrum no, <laughs> so this not. time the family picture just works that little bit differently everybody steps off the rostrum and they all come together congratulations to Brazil congratulations to Uzbekistan France and Japan, Japan again, top of the pile. They not only have uh, dominated in the individual competition here, and uh, remember that we have got the Olympic Games in three weeks' time, Loretta. Doesn't see oh, three weeks, not long. Well, it's never happened before, you know. It's the this first time. This is the first time, time isn't yeah, it? Yeah, first time ever. World Championships, Olympic Games, and it's ah, oh, look at that. Oh, lovely. World Champions, Japan.
Everybody will be able to celebrate. Well, the individual competition that lasted seven days, we had some amazing, amazing judo. Uh, we saw a lot of uh, transitional work and newaza in the first two days of competition. Then we got into a couple of days where it was Tachiwaza and Newaza, and uh, we saw a lot of throws and a lot of ippons there. But the judo all the way through has just been fantastic. It's, it's been a great world championships. It's it been really a, has. Yeah, it's been a, a, a roller coaster of emotions, hasn't it? There's been places that the world titles have been won, knowing that they don't go to the Olympic Games. There's been people knocking on the door, qualifying by getting into the semi-final of the World Championships to just qualify at the last hurdle to get to those Olympic Games. And there's been some that were already going to the Games to be knocked out at the last hurdle of going to Tokyo. It has been emotional, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, we've looked at all the teams and, and you know, just their feelings, you know. It, I mean, judo, it really is a judo family. These people will uh, carry with this, uh, this with them forever. And uh, all I can say is, is that while all of these teams celebrate here, we're going to look at uh, the uh, team celebrations happen. This is where they can all come together and be friends for a little while. Three weeks anyway, and then, well, some of them are going to travel uh, to Tokyo for the Olympic Games. Here is... Uh, Uzbekistan. Uh, it's been uh, emotional. It's Definitely. been fantastic. It's a bit, of, a, a bit of everything. Loretta, this has been great. I, I, having you and uh, Dennis uh, to work with me all the way through the individuals and this teams has been uh, fantastic. As always, Neil, it's been an absolute pleasure working with you and um, look forward to the next time we come together and I'm sure it'll be another week of really exciting judo and good luck and hope it all goes well in Tokyo. Yes, I'll be I look forward out. to being back with you all at the Olympic Games uh, from Loretta Doyle, uh, from uh, myself, uh, Neil Adams, uh, from the World Championships in here in Hungary. It's goodbye for now and I'll see you in Tokyo. Goodbye. Well, hello and welcome to our roundup of the medal matches uh, from uh, this afternoon's final block here at the Pap Laszlo Arena in Budapest, the uh, final day of competition at this year's World uh, Judo Championships. It was the team event and as you've just seen, it was Japan who came out uh, uh, victorious, 4-0 winners. Uh, against France. France again the, uh, the, the bridesmaids but uh, no surprise given the strength of the Japanese team that was uh, put out and the inexperience and the youth of the French team. They put in uh, as good a performance as you can expect and you cannot possibly uh, be disappointed with a silver medal at the World Championship. So a terrific effort from the uh, French team but the Japanese really stepped things up in that final and putting out um, you know their, their, their big guns it was always going to be difficult uh, with the the team that the Japanese had put in uh, the wins came for Hashimoto, Nizoi, Nagazawa and Akiba and they didn't have to go as far as Kageura Kokoro the current world champion at uh, plus 100 kilos or even Funakubo Haruka who happens to be a three times world champion herself but all in the junior so 4-0 for uh, Japan over France in that final before we got that far was the uh, before we got that far there was the little matter of Uzbekistan getting into the the top tier they took a world medal for the first time when they defeated the Republic of Korea 4-1. Uh, their wins coming from Nomonov, uh, Matniazova, Jandriv and Turaboyev. So congratulations to uh, Uzbekistan. And the next world championships, by the way, will be in Uzbekistan. There was another bronze medal um, match that featured Brazil 
against the RJF and Brazil came out winners there 4-2 uh, and the um, scores coming from Portela, Souza, Maura and Nascimento. Yes, so once again the Japanese top of the table 2017, 2018, 2019 and now here again in Budapest. They won here in Budapest in 2017 when we initiated the, uh, the mixed team uh, competition and that's why you will have seen some of the uh, Japanese team holding up four fingers, four titles for the Japanese but I think it's going to be a little bit tougher when we come to uh, Tokyo. That's all the action that we've got for you. Thanks very much for taking the time to uh, join us, not just today for the team event but uh, throughout the, the week we had seven days of terrific uh, judo. It's been an absolute pleasure to be broadcasting um, here uh, in um, uh, Budapest and I want to take this opportunity to thank all of our uh, live broadcast team including our absolutely super uh, technician Federico Vitali, Simon Mares and of course our chief Matthias Fischer. I also want to take this opportunity to thank our wonderful commentary team of Loretta Cusat doyle Neil Adams and Dennis van der Geest. but from everyone here in Budapest it's bye-bye for now. <laughs>